Hey everybody, this is Josh Janes with KeepTurning.com. Uh, I had a few people asking me about how I handle my lettering in Adobe Illustrator. Uh, so I'm going to do a quick tutorial on uh, the way I work. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, but it's the way that works best for me. Uh, so let's uh, open up Illustrator and we'll do is uh, zoom in here. I got a few lines of type. I already pre made a a few uh, ellipses and a tail and stuff and uh, what we're going to do is uh, we'll take these pieces let's say we'll just make a single word balloon for right now now I've seen people try to actually you know draw out the balloons it's that's nothing but trouble and a waste of time um, I've also seen people combine them and they actually crush them together and make one solid object that's a bad idea. You want this to be as editable as possible. Uh, so what we're going to do is taking our uh, our selection, our direct selection tool, uh, click on these two pieces, or you could use a regular selection tool. Totally up to you at this point. Uh, it's really not important. Um, but what you're going to do is hold down the uh, option key and click on under the Pathfinder. Click on the Combine tool. Now by holding down option, it's going to make it one piece, but at the same time leave them individual objects so you can move them around. So now, using the direct selection tool, the little white arrow, uh, grab just the tail. You can pull the tail off, you can move the tail around. By holding down the command key, it'll switch you back to the regular selection tool, the black arrow tool. And by doing that, then you can rotate that piece and uh, oops, just don't grab those rounding corner uh, buttons um, but we can rotate it and place it wherever we want so if it, you know guys up here guys down there doesn't really matter for this we know our guy is over in this corner over here so we'll just put the balloon tail down in that corner all right so now since we've already combined those and you already have a, a uh, it's, it's pretty much like a compound object, uh, but it, doesn't, it functions a little different. Uh, what we can actually do is by just selecting these two objects and let's cut them, uh, Command X. If we take the direct selection tool and just click on a piece of this object and then hit Command F, for, to uh, paste it back in but to paste it directly in front of this object we have selected it's now a part of that that uh, combined image so if we take these over now it's it's a piece of it which is nice because we have this connecting tail in our thing and it's it's all one balloon now so then we can take bring in our words which I'm using uh, fun I got off the net uh, I can't remember if it was which company it was, but it's that Dave Gibbons lower. I hope, Dave, I'm pronouncing your name right. I'm really bad at that. Uh, but with this single line here, we can just drop it in place. Now, as far as the uh, text that's going in this, uh, this main word balloon, what you can do is direct selection tool again, the white arrow, click on that main balloon and hit uh, Command C for copy. And then hit uh, click off of it because otherwise it's going to try to paste it in as part of the object and you don't want to do that. Uh, so click off of it but then hit command F again so it puts it right back in front of it as its own object. And uh, we can reduce that down a little bit. Let's get our type here. We're going to select it and copy it. And then we're going to, you'll get, see the the uh, cursor changed to the circular shape around it. Uh, it looks like a circular dotted selection around the uh, around the cursor. Uh, click on that on the line for that uh, new circle we dropped there. Now what it did is it turned that into a text box, and we can paste that text in. And by going to the normal selection tool, we can resize this word balloon, reshape it a little bit, however we want. And you all, you're going to want to make sure your paragraph's set to center, because if otherwise you're going to get something like that. That's not what we want. So, click center, 
and uh, you may have to come in here. You can just try using the re, you know just reshaping this to get what you want, but sometimes you'll get this kind of thing going on. And if you do, best thing to do is just come in, decide where you want your break, and click it, and then just align your text where you want it to be in your word balloon. Get a nice breathing room around it. Remember, if you get your words in there and then you're like, okay, the word balloon needs reshape, take your direct selection tool, the white arrow, click on the elliptical shape for that balloon, and you can reshape it. Uh, something to remember about line weights in, in Adobe Illustrator. I see a lot of people who are unfamiliar with how the program works that they'll run into this problem is that when you're using the direct selection tool in a piece together object like this I can grab just the uh, a piece of it and I can grab these edges and I can reshape it however I want and the line weight will always stay the same because I'm only working with a part of that object I can take this balloon and I can make it huge stays still stays exactly the same as it was the problem is is if you decide that you're going to blow up that entire word balloon and you have not you have not checked your settings in the scale tool if we come over here and we just grab this and we blow it up our line weights are going to jump because you're scaling the entire object and most likely underneath your uh, scale tool right here if you double click it you're going to see your options are set to scale strokes and effects if you have this checked you're going to see all your line weights jump as you scale it. So in this instance, and it's going to vary depending on what you want to do on your project. You'll sometimes you want this on, sometimes you won't. Uh, in this instance, if you're blowing up an entire word balloon, uh, you're going to want to make sure that's unchecked. And if you want to uncheck that, let's uncheck the scale corners too. Uh, if we take this object again now and we blow it up line weight stays exactly the same because you, you don't want various line weights on your word balloons all over the place it's gonna look really odd um, so from there we we have our main word balloon we can bring it up here you know place it where there he is he's he's gone all robocop on him uh, now if you want to take that word balloon up another step then we can start working with the appearance palette and uh, this is where it gets a lot, a lot easier to do stuff. You can add a lot of nice tech, you know, styles and techniques to your word balloons, and uh, and it's it's uh, it's just really really simple. Uh, I think you'll like this. So in this situation here, I uh, I created. I already created a bunch of different line profiles and I don't, if you haven't messed with line profiles they're located right here if you click on it there's some standard ones pre-made what I did is I had created my own originally let's see here it's down toward the bottom there it is this one right here I got a uh, kind of wavy line shape it's not so that the line isn't perfect but it it, it ends the same on both ends so what we can do is let's click on just the word balloon and yep and we're going to actually we'll come over here to the stroke for this and there's our profiles our line profiles I'm going to scroll down again find that one there it is when I click on that it just makes the line weight change so you don't have this perfect computerized line weight it's it's got a, a little you know thick and thin going on to it and it's going to vary a lot it's depending on how the balloon is shaped and where everything is you'll you can actually see it change as I as I move this stuff around the line weight will uh, will change on the balloon depending on where stuff is what's great about this is once you create that you can then open up your graphic style palette oops clicked on the wrong spot this is uh, it's under window graphic styles uh, I already have a bunch pre-made but we'll take this one and we'll go over here and click click for a new graphic style and we'll name it uh, test line and what's great is whenever you make 
newer balloons in the future. That, and we're going to combine it. You can just click on it and click your graphic style for it, and it's automatically going to add that graphic style to it. Now, it's not real noticeable on this because there wasn't much of a change, but I have other ones that I created where it's a very noticeable change. And those can be added at any point to any project. Uh, something to remember too, and this was something I was taught when I was in school, is that y you never want those perfectly elliptical word balloons. They just look mechanical and kind of generic. Uh, so if you were dropping the type in here, let's bring that. Let me copy that. All right, so if I was bringing my text in here and... Let me reshape it. Right now it's just a, uh, it's a perfect oval. What you can do is, taking that direct arrow tool, just not grabbing the text. Let's move the text out of the way for a second here. Uh, you can grab just those corners and just Bend them out a little bit. Make it a little less oval, a little more human looking, and uh, not so mechanical. And that's pretty much it. You can just set them up however you want it. And using this appearance tool over here, just let me zoom in here, the appearance palette. Uh, if you click on that, you can see how this was built. So. We have a, a thicker black stroke around the back that's our outer edge. We got a gray that's our in-between line. We got the fill color, which is our actual interior. And then we have a main black stroke that runs the edge of this, which we can go through then and we can turn them off or on depending on what we need. But all this is adjustable. So if I zoom out here. We can say, oh, I want that inner stroke for this is supposed to be yellow. And you know what? And maybe the outline, we don't want it black for this. We want it to be like a, a I want that to be a bright red. And you can create all sorts of variations of styles. And uh, using, along with that, you can then start using uh, brush tools and add in come in here Oops. grab that let's say our rough balloon a rough balloon has the profile added to it but it also has a dry brush layer over top so you, uh, you get this uh, this rough texture on the outside which you can do the same thing you control it individually whoa that's a little heavy <laughs> uh, but you could set it to like say 0.5 And, uh, and you have full control over all that. And again, you can come in here and say, okay, well, you know, that's got to be bigger now because of that. Get our text set up. Really totally up to you on this. But the best part is, is that then when you take this text, I work, like I said, I work on, from my uh, Lost Dogs comic, I work directly in Illustrator from start to finish. So if I pull up one of those pages that out of there um I have my text on a layer toward the top we can zoom in here uh, everything is is very adjustable um, let's zoom out here um we can come back and say okay this that all looks good except for you know this text isn't working here I want I want this text to be down here more and this let's come over here let me drop that down and you can grab just segments of this and move it to where you need it to be and then we can just change our uh, our placement and it's very simple to rework your lettering however you need it to be well, it's also nice, a feature that uh, that you don't, a lot of people don't know, is that if you're in on this, this text here, uh, 
you can come in and hold down the option key and under the layers palette click on the eye and uh, oops <laughs> that wasn't it <laughs> actually I meant I meant the command key <laughs> uh, if you click, hold down the command key and you click the eye uh, you can uh, you can turn it to just outline so you can see through what your text is above um, makes it uh makes it really easy to control i messed that all up anyways so that's the basics um if you have any questions just hit me up uh, drop me a comment or shoot me an email and i uh, hope that helps out later